Hey, what's up guys? I'm here in the Anthem Student Center getting some rehearsal in. Um, if you're watching my vlogs, this looks like a familiar scene, and it is. Um, I'm doing a quick run with Torn and the guys. Um, this weekend, uh, Torn hit me up. His keys player, Nick, um, is out. So Chris is hopping off drums onto keys, and uh, I'm going to fill in. So we're, we have two shows um, that I'm doing uh, Friday in Anaheim Fish Fest, Anaheim, California, and then, I'm sorry, Saturday in Anaheim, and then Sunday in Oakland, which is Spirit West Coast, I think. Um, so it's gonna be fun. Chris sent me the set. Uh, it's familiar songs, it's torn stuff, but the arrangements are incredible. Just super dope live arrangements, really fun. Um, mix some stuff up, but kind of challenging. So I've got to really dig it out. It's Tuesday night. Um, right now it's 10, 20. Uh, so I've been here since like eight or so. Um, so I got about two hours in so far. So hopefully I can put about eight to ten hours on this um, This week before I head out there just so I'm super comfortable So I'll kind of take you guys through again I've done a vlog like this where I kind of show you how this these quick runs go um, But I continually get questions about you know like working with an artist and again I want to be real honest and I don't have tons of experience with different artists I've worked with Torin and mostly with church conferences church events which are a lot different than working with an artist um, but man, you just gotta be super prepared because this one, it's crazy. I fly out 5 a.m. Saturday because it's a last minute thing. I'm filling in last minute so we couldn't get a good flight, but fly out 5 a.m. Saturday, two shows Saturday, um, fly over Sunday. And I'm playing kit and I believe I'm running tracks on Chris's computer because that's the way the lines are set up. So, you know, I'm sitting down, no rehearsal with the band or anything except for sound check. But I'm gonna sit down, run tracks, play the set, you know, traveling day is the same day as the show. I'm flying in, I'm playing the set. So it's like a ton of things going on. So mentally, it's probably the biggest thing. You gotta be really mentally prepared. Um, just be able to sit down and, you know, crush it, right? Just come out and just blaze as good as you can without it. You don't have a lot of warm time. You don't have time to get comfortable on the kit. You know, you get the kit, you gotta be ready. You gotta, you know, be able to sit down and get comfortable really quick. So it's gonna be a blast. Um, it's got its challenges. That's why I really wanna put some time into it where I'm really comfortable. So that all the things I'm not just extremely comfortable with aren't really going to matter because I know the material so good. So it's going to be crazy again because I'll probably see you the next time Saturday morning at 3 a.m. heading to the airport. So not so pumped about that, but this week is going to be really fun. Looking forward to it. And uh, so I'm going to get back to the set of rehearsing and I'll probably see you at 3 a.m. on Saturday. All right, just got my stuff packed up. Um, got home from the gym night at church and got everything ready, loaded, all my gears ready to go. So I'm gonna try to get a couple hours of sleep and they'll be on the way to the airport. All right, so we're on the way to the airport. Um, I am kind of on the fence as to whether or not I think sleep was a good idea or not. But we'll be all right. I, I can sleep on planes usually, so I should be pretty good, but um, just trying to get there and time to like get checked in, make sure everything's good. I'm not really the person that freaks out and gets there like three hours early, but uh, I am getting a little early this morning just to kind of make sure everything's good to go. So uh, we'll get checked in, hopefully pretty quick, get through security quick, hopefully being on the first flight out, and uh, maybe I can get some sleep on the plane when I get there. I forgot my neck pillow. My mother-in-law would be ashamed. No neck pillow. I think we'll make it though. made it through security uh, here in Houston about to board my flight to Dallas and then on to I think Orange County so uh, just a quick flight over to Dallas quick layover and then on to California made it to Dallas about to board my flight now to Santa Ana I think I get in at like 8 a.m. California time or something so about a three-hour flight Pretty much slept on the way over here for that short flight, but got one more, and then we'll touch down in, in Cali. All 
All right, made it here to Orange County. I think the rest of the guys are flying in like two hours, so got a little bit of a wait, and uh, then we'll head over straight over to the venue. I think for sound check. So two hours, and then we'll get going. the outdoor stage so like all the artists merch tents and stuff are out here and uh, then you have the stage so we're playing two sets an outdoor set and an indoor set so about to do our main stage sound check with the guys Got my guy Abraham here doing videography and stuff, so about to get it going. Got our gear ready to go. I got symbols I'm bringing up uh, and the, the pad, SPDSX pad. So yeah, about to check and then we'll do our indoor set and then we're going to go outside and check and do our uh, festival stage or outdoor stage check. So Danny Goki's checking right now.
clean this coffee? Because I'm gonna take it. This is the Apostle Chris. Ooh. Figure that out. <laughs> right <laughs> mid donut <laughs> bite, bro. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Chris. That's I don't know. Weird. I don't have this. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. This guy was playing keys and giving me drum licks. I was waiting for him just to feed me licks how to what to play. No, bro, Daniel. Can we talk good. about Chris on keys he for guide, a second? Guided me through. I don't even know. I don't know what sounds I'm using. I don't even. I'm a little nervous. I got like juniors right now. Three sounds the whole show. Bro, you smashed. It was awesome. Yeah, what did you add? Where was it? You added something. That, yeah. What was, was it? Say, it was, uh, undefeated. undefeated. Several things. Undefeated. But that yeah. was fine. Yes. Because I don't know what Nick. Like, I don't he goes like play. classical mode on yeah. you, but that was sick too. I knew, that, I, needed, I knew there needed to be something. Just right finished there. the first set. Mm -hmm. Gonna go check on the outside stage and then play right after. So I'm pumped. Just got back to the room with the man himself. Hey! And um, I'm gonna crash and then fly to Oakland in the morning. And then we got two sets tomorrow. Kind of same setup, I think. Main stage and then outdoor stage. So, super great day today. Get some room service and then gonna crash. And we'll pick up with you guys in the morning. Hey, what's up, guys? Just getting a little bit of last minute prep in tonight. Uh, we got a gym night. And um, so, I'm about to go over to the gym, make sure everything's good to go. Um, but I'm just hitting the set one more time and I'm doing something a little bit different to try to get the audio this time So I've got this little setup um, Because this is a like two festivals both are festivals and so it's really quick on and off I'm not sure if we're gonna get front of house audio probably not it's probably gonna be crazy So what I'm doing is I'm taking my zoom um, H4n I've got a little adapter here and I'm going to come out of my headphone pack So with a little splitter so basically I'm gonna put a splitter um, one side is going to go to my headphones and the other side is going to go to this um, eighth inch line so and it's going to run into the H4N. So ideally I'll be able to set this up somewhere where I'm kind of pointing it at the kit. So what I'm going to get is one line from my um, mix with this guy coming out of my pack, the splitter out of my pack. So it's going to be one line of mix and then I'm also going to be capturing the drums with these two microphones. So that way I'll have like my inner mix, it'll have click and all that kind of stuff, but you know, it'll have the drum mix, but then also have raw drums, um, you know, as well. So even if, even if I have to throw this thing on the ground, hopefully I still should be able to at least get my ear mix, even if I can't get this situated somewhere that, um, you know, is helpful. So I'm grabbing, I'm bringing this little clamp, which I've talked about all the time, but this little small rig clamp, it's super easy to attach anywhere. So my hope is that I can get this thing attached somewhere that it'll, it'll help. So. Anyways, it's run a gun, but I wanted just to share something else with you. Um, and I'm gonna be honest and say that I don't have tons of experience playing with a lot of artists. I'm not a touring drummer, I'm not a traveling drummer. 
I pretty much played um, with Torn as far as the only professional artist. I've done a couple other shows, but nothing really of note. I'm not saying I've got a wealth of information, but um, I have played extensively in like church conferences and things, and that's kind of a different thing. But especially at shows like on the road, um, I've talked about being like super, super prepared. Um, and it's obvious, you know, yeah, be prepared. But something you don't think about is you are going to be so nervous and uncomfortable. Uh, and it's going to have nothing to do with the music. The music is going to be the last thing on your mind when you sit down to play at like a festival or a show where you're not the headliner. Why do I say that? Because the reality is you are going to get bust on for a sound check where you're going to be rushed the entire time. Um, your ear mix isn't going to be perfect. The drum may be set up for somebody else. It's going to be weird. You're not going to have enough time to get everything set. You're going to be constantly fiddling with something. It's going to be push, push, push like very quick time frames and then you're off, the sound check's off, um, and then you come back and something's gonna be different when you sit down for your actual set, that your mix is gonna be a little different maybe, or the guy moved the drums or something fell, or something's gonna be different. So literally, the last thing you're thinking about is the actual material. Not until you get the click begins to play, do you actually focus on your material. You're thinking about all these other outside sources, so like, again, tomorrow I'm flying out, we're getting there, we're traveling there, we're you know doing sound check, we're running here, running there, so it's like super quick all the time. I love it, I'm not complaining, it's incredible. Um, but it just really emphasizes the fact that you've got to be locked in with your stuff because you're not going to have time to just like sit and doodle and go over stuff or you know get situated, make sure you're really comfortable. You've got to be on it immediately, even if the kit is weird, even if your mix ends up being weird or something is out of whack. You know you've got to be able to sit down and just blaze in a moment's notice. You know so that's why I'm really trying to get a lot of time with all this stuff where I know exactly the fills I'm going to play, I know exactly where I'm going to play stuff, I know exactly how it's going to feel. Exactly. I'm not even saying exactly. Exactly. I know exactly what I'm going to do where. Um, so I'm trying to lock into that point where I'm literally on autopilot and I can think about engaging with the audience maybe or you know being a little um, uh, more engaged in showmanship on the stage or talking to the guys you know um, as we're playing because if I'm so worried about the material I'm going to be like a robot up there. I want to play loose, loosen up. So I just want to share a couple of things with you if you're looking to play for somebody. Um, or you're trying to take the next step, like think about that. So it's not just know more your material to know it, it's know it so that you can literally not worry about it at all and you're focused on all these other things and be able to sit down and adapt immediately. Like tomorrow, I'm playing with a SPDSX pad with all kinds of stuff. Chris has set up snaps and claps and all kinds of stuff. I've never played with it. I'm gonna play with it once in a different show, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna practice it. I'm gonna sit down at Soundcheck and play with it. And also, I'm running tracks, I think, so I'm not sure exactly how the setup is, but I'm gonna have to sit down and be super comfortable immediately Chris is going to say, hey, fire the track, here it is, boom. I got like maybe five minutes to like sit with it and make sure everything's good. Um, so all those things come into play when you sit down and play for a show like this. But hopefully I'll be able to get some kind of audio with this little setup. I'll get some video. And I've got a couple of guys that are going to meet me out there to film and take pictures and stuff. So hopefully I'll get some cool stuff. We'll see. It's going to be a whirlwind. But uh, we'll see you guys, I guess, in the morning.